Hello ladies and gentlemen, scaretuba 4 here bringing you another Minecraft World War II vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the Tiger II. The Tiger II is a German heavy tank of the Second World War. The official German designation was Panzerkampfwagen Tiger Ost B, often shortened to Tiger B. The Ordnance Inventory designation was SDKFZ-182 and is often known under the informal name Kronz Tiger. Or, or uh, I think that's right, Kronz Tiger. Uh, something like that, uh, but basically the German name for a Bengal tiger. It was often tr uh, translated literally as Royal Tiger or somewhat incorrectly as the King Tiger by Allied soldiers, especially by American forces. The Tiger II was the successor to the Tiger I, combining the later's thick armor with an armor sloping used on the Panther medium tank. The tank weighed almost 70 tons and was protected by 100 to 185 millimeters of armor to the front. It was armed with a long barreled 8.8 centimeter KWK 43L 71 anti tank cannon, and the chassis was also the basis of the Yeg Tiger Turtleless Tank Destroyer. The Tiger II was issued to heavy tank battalions of the Army and the Waffen SS. In the first, uh, it was first used in combat by the 503rd uh, Heavy uh, Panzer Battalion during the Allied invasion of Normandy on July 11th, 1944. On the Eastern Front, the first unit to be outfitted with the Tiger II was a 501st uh, Heavy Tank uh, Panzer Division, or Battalion, sorry, which was uh, September 1st, 1944, listed uh, 25 Tiger II's operational. Uh, so anyways, the uh, tank itself is obviously a really cool tank. Um, definitely a huge improvement over the previous Tiger I, kind of got rid of the weak spots and stuff with the front kind of, you know, squared away or, you know, just like straight armor in the front, which uh, was a very big weak spot for the Tiger. Uh, but the tank kind of replaced that and kind of took on that more kind of traditional uh, t tank role of having that kind of sloped armor and having a longer barreled, uh, more powerful, uh, you know, anti-tank gun and stuff like that, even though it was still the same uh, millimeter size, it was uh, definitely stronger with having a longer barrel and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, pretty excited to get a new King Tiger out there. It's been a while since we've uh, done one, and I actually did have one out for a while ago, but uh, you know, I never really, uh, never really, never really, uh, you, you know, went back and redid it. And it's something that definitely needs to be redone. And a lot of you guys have asked for a nice redesign. So technically, I'm going to consider this my 19,000 subscriber special, as it's been highly requested for such a long time to redo the Tiger, and um, I, you know, want to keep on some kind of tradition of trying to keep a. Uh, kind of a special build coming out for you guys or something that's highly requested uh, for each subscriber milestone. Um, so anyways, this uh, King Tiger is uh, obviously really nice looking. Uh, you can obviously change up the tank, have it just tan, have it just whatever you want it to be. Uh, you can see here I went with a camouflage, just kind of a camouflage I got off seeing a couple models and um, I thought it looked pretty cool and it definitely added a new kind of uh, it added a whole new kind of, uh, I guess, look to the tank is what I'm saying instead of just doing it in kind of a standard kind of tan camouflage or uh, tan paint scheme. So uh, obviously going ahead and taking a look at the build. We have obviously the main gun here very, uh, you know, long uh, compared to the standard 8.8mm uh, on the Tiger 1. Uh, we got the turret here, which is obviously more rounded off, more kind of like looks more like a modern turret. Um, or kind of a more kind of Cold War, I guess, modern for, I guess, World War II standards turret design. Uh, we got the Commander's Cupola hatches and stuff like that up on top here. And, um, you know, overall good shaping over there around the turret. Uh, coming back to the back here, you got obviously the vents, all that kind of stuff. Kind of a little bit mimics the Tiger One in the back here. Um, exhausts and all that pretty much stuff back here. Uh, on the side, you got your road wheels, uh, the armor panels that kind of go over the tracks in this area here, the side sloped armor. And, um, you know, pretty much that's the King Tiger. I really like the way it came out, and obviously you guys do not need to put the camouflage on, but I will be showing you guys how to do it um, in this tutorial, so it is pretty straightforward. But, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys do enjoy the new King Tiger. Definitely a lot of people have been asking for a new one for quite some time, so I'm really happy to finally deliver on that and give you guys a nice, um, cool build for you guys all to enjoy. Anyways, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first uh, layer, or set of layers, sorry, layer zero for one. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into our first uh, layers, we'll be working on layers 0 through 1. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, or, you know, in the introduction bit, I will be doing this thing uh, basically in a straight camouflage. <coughs> Alright guys, uh, so going ahead and moving into our first layer, we'll be beginning with layers 0 through 1. Now, uh, 
I kind of mentioned in the beginning of the video that, uh, you know, you guys can obviously do whatever paint scheme or whatever you guys want to do for it. That's completely cool. You don't have to do the camouflage, but we will be building this thing all tan to start off with. And then I'll be going back and adding the camouflage. It's just a little bit easier. And, uh, you know, those that want to keep it a tan tank can do that. Those that want to do a different camouflage can obviously do that and, you know, just go crazy with it and, you know, have fun. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're gonna, just going to be building a standard tan. So if you're wondering why I'm, you know, not putting the color blocks in, just worry, don't worry about it. We'll be coming to that um, at the end of the tutorial. Anyways, to go ahead and get started here, we're going to place down a row of two here of narrow brick slabs. We're going to place down one and two narrow brick slabs across like this. There's going to be a start here of the right front tracks. Coming off these narrow brick top or slabs toward the front, we're going to place down two top slabs. Going back from these, we're going to place down two uh, smooth sandstone blocks, followed by a stone bun on the side, item frame, and a smooth sandstone block in the item frame. Going ahead, continuing back, we're going to place down a narrow brick block in the ground, a sandstone, smooth sandstone block right here, and then a skeleton with their skeleton skull like that. We're going to go ahead and repeat this pattern a few more times. I believe we're going to go ahead and actually do it three more times. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So we have two smooth sandstone blocks, stone button on the end, item frame, smooth sandstone block, uh, a smooth sandstone block here, narrow brick block in the ground with their skeleton skull. We're going to do this two more times. So uh, same design here, pretty straightforward. And one more time, stone button or item frame place that down first I guess. Uh, smooth sandstone block in the item frame, stone button, narrow brick block in the ground, smooth sandstone block, and wither skeleton skull. So you get something that looks like this so far. After you have that done, we're going to place down one more row of two of smooth sandstone, stone button on the side, item frame, and a smooth sandstone block in the item frame. Once that's done, we're going to place down two narrow brick slabs across the back here, two narrow brick top slabs coming off those slabs like so. Uh, when that's all finished there, we're going to go ahead and take our sandstone slabs, we're going to place down a row of three coming off these narrow brick uh, slabs right here, so row three over, and then we're gonna go ahead and go up here and do the same thing. So just a row of three of sandstone top slabs over, like so. Uh, once that's done, in the space in between here, those uh, rows of three of uh, sandstone top slabs, we're gonna go ahead and basically fill the whole space in. So just like this for the bottom of the tank, and if you are doing interior, the floor of the tank. Uh, when that's all finished there, on the back here, in the center, uh, or basically on the smooth sandstone, or the sandstone top slabs in the middle, we're gonna place down a stone brick top slab and a wither skeleton skull back. Again, this is only on the back rear section of the tank here, so make sure that you are at the rear of the tank when you put that on. Uh, up here in the uh, up here on this side, we're going to go ahead and copy the same design we did for the tracks, just from the air side, just over to this side. So we're just going to go ahead and kind of copy the same design uh, just over here to this side. So I'm going to go ahead and do it a little bit faster. If you need to, you can pause the video or refer back to the air side, or if you uh, can keep up, build along uh, with it. We're just going to go ahead and copy the same design um, over here to this side. So pretty straightforward stuff. Item frames, of course, are smooth sandstone blocks in our item frames. And like this all the way down. And uh, try not to break your item frames like I did. And stone buttons over the smooth sandstone blocks. And just like that, you have your road wheels done. And then the last thing for us to do back here is place on two narrow brick slabs. And then two narrow brick top slabs like that toward the back here. And uh, with that all complete, that is going to wrap up layers zero through one and get our start, or basically our base established for the tank. Uh, with that all complete, we can go ahead and move on to our next layer, which is going to be layer number two. All right, guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer number two, we're going to go ahead and start off by taking our sandstone stairs and we're going to place down a row of two of sandstone upside down stairs on top of these narrow brick half slabs up here in the front. Uh, we're going to go and do this on both sides. Um, and again, this is only on the front of the tank. So uh, just like that, get those ups and down stairs. Now around the backs of the stairs and also the sides, we're gonna go ahead and want to place down some signs. And we're only gonna place down a wooden sign on the side of the stair on the outside of the tank like that. Cause in the inside here, we will have the kind of front, uh, you know, basically sloped armor for the tank going in there. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that um, open right there in the middle. So you get something that looks like this on both sides there. With that done, we're gonna take our sandstone stairs. We're gonna place down a row of three of stairs across in between those upside down stairs, like that for the front sloping armor. Uh, going ahead and continuing on, we're gonna take our smooth sandstone blocks. We're gonna place down a row of seven all the way across like this. We're gonna place down an item frame with a cobweb in it on the side here of the, or basically at the end of both rows here, a uh, stone button on the smooth sandstone block. Same thing over here, just like that, uh, for kind of like the sprocket wheel that the track will wrap around. Uh, when that's all done there, we're going to go and take our smooth sandstone blocks, place down a row of five across the middle here, followed by a sandstone upside down stair on both sides, just like that. 
Uh, once that's done, we're going to go and take our smooth sandstone blocks, going back from the sandstone stairs. We're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine uh, smooth sandstone blocks back. Same thing over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now, if you are doing an interior, you can kind of leave the space open to, you know, play around with the interior. Or you can just choose to fill it in. Um, you know, I just fill it in just to kind of keep a, you know, clean look for it, I guess, for each uh, layer. It makes everything a little bit easier to go off of later on. Uh, but, you know, you don't need to uh, completely fill it in. Um, you just need the side panels on the sides there. Uh, but anyways, going ahead and going to the sides, uh, we want to go ahead and start off by basically placing down a pattern. So we're going to place down a sign, uh, a stone, stone button, a sign, a stone button, uh, a sign. Oops, my bad. Wrong place. A sign, stone button, stone button, sign. And uh, you're just going to keep kind of doing this alternating pattern along the side here. And we're going to go over this side and do the same thing. So a sign, um, stone buttons, and then sign, 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 and sign. So pretty straightforward design there, nothing too fancy. Um, go ahead and come back to this section here. We're going to place down a uh, row of five of smooth sandstone across the middle here, followed by another brick slab on top of this top slab here on both ends. Once that's done, we're going to take our sandstone stairs, place down one and two sandstone stairs like this on both sides like so. Uh, continuing on, we're going to place down a polished granite block next to the sandstone stairs here on both sides and in between the, uh, or sorry, um, what did I say these were? Polished granite, uh, hopefully I said polished granite, but basically polished granite, like polished granite blocks on both sides. I probably said polished granite, so my bad. Um, and we're going to place these on both sides here next to the stairs. Uh, we will, it depending on what Minecraft version you're on, uh, with my version I need to break this wither skeleton skull to place down a block and then a dark oak fence gate opened up in the middle there. Um, if you're on the newer versions, I think you can just place it down. So, um, either way, you want a dark oak fence gate in between these uh, polished granite blocks. You want it opened up like so. And then coming off these polished granite blocks toward the back, we're going to place down uh, two wither skeleton skulls like that. With that all complete, that is going to do it for layer two. With that, let's move on to layer number three. All right, guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number three. So, for layer three, we're going to start off by taking our wooden trapdoors. We're going to place down one and two, and one and two on top of those sandstone upside down stairs, like so. Once that's all done, we're going to go and take a uh, sandstone stair. We're going to place it down right here in the middle on that smooth sandstone block, like this. We're going to go ahead and go to the, will be the right side of the tank. So, this side over here, we're going to place down a smooth sandstone block. And coming off this smooth sandstone block, we're going to place down a end rod, and it's going to be the whole mounted machine gun right here. Over here on the other side, however, we're going to place down a row of one and two sandstone stairs to the side and then a corner stair. So you have three regular stairs right here and then a corner stair on the side. Over here on this side, we're going to place down one stair here and then a corner stair. Um, so you have something that kind of looks like this. All the way around there, you kind of get your foot front sloping armor and all that stuff going on there. Also on the front here, we're going to go and take a sign and place down a sign coming off this uh, this uh, sandstone stair right here. And then on it, we're going to place down a... Uh, item frame and we will need to go ahead and grab ourselves a glass block so a glass block and we're going to go ahead and place, place it down in the item frame like so and uh it wasn't transferred over when i actually copied and pasted the vehicle over so that's why it's missing over there but yeah uh we're just gonna have that light there that's your little headlight there in the front now after that's all done we're gonna go and grab ourselves a birchwood plank we're gonna go ahead and go back from the smooth sandstone block right here and then the sandstone stair to the left side here in the space in between the birchwood planks we're gonna place down a smooth sandstone block followed by one out to both ends and then we just want to place down a sandstone stair right here on top of that sandstone upside down stair. Go ahead and continue now. We're going to take our sandstone stairs. We're going to go back one, two, three, and four. Sandstone stairs back. Same thing over here. One, two, three, and four. In the space in between here, we're going to go ahead and fill the space in with uh, four rows of five of smooth sandstone blocks. Again, if you do want to do some kind of a tier, you will be able to fit some in here. You just got to figure out what blocks. Uh, will work to be deleted but a majority of these blocks are needed and most likely you're only going to end up really with a space like this on the inside there for your interior but um you know that's something you can work on if you do plan on adding that uh going ahead and continue now we're going to place down a, another row of three or sorry row of five of smooth, smooth sandstone going across here uh we then want to place down a second row and then we're going to even place down a third row of five of smooth sandstone going across and we're going to go ahead and go into a uh, fourth row like this. Now along the side here of these uh, rows, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some cobblestone walls. We're going to place down one, two, three, and four cobblestone walls along the side here. One, two, three, and four. Uh, going ahead and continuing on, uh, we're going to go take our uh, sands, smooth sandstone blocks and we can actually go and keep going on with these rows. So 
We're going to place down a fifth row of five across. Again, a cobblestone wall on both ends. Uh, when we get to this point right here, we're going to place down a cobblestone wall in the middle, followed by two smooth sandstone blocks out to the sides on both sides. And then just a cobblestone wall right here on top of that narrow brick slab, like that, creating a row of six of cobblestone walls along the sides here. Uh, once that's done for the back section back here, we're going to go and place down a sandstone upside down stair, coming off this uh, smooth sandstone block here on the left side. We then want to place down a stone brick upside down stair right here. Uh, in the middle, we're going to place down a sandstone stair, followed by one and two more out to the side, save a row of three like that out to the side there. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a birchwood fence gate. We're going to place down a birchwood fence gate coming off this sandstone upside down stair on both ends like this, opened up, of course, with the fence gate. And then on the side of the stair here, we're going to place down a wooden sign. Same thing over here, like so. Uh, with that all done in the space in the middle here, we're going to go ahead and place down a acacia wood fence post coming up from this uh, wither skeleton skull like that on both sides there. Middle space is going to be left open. Uh, for a little bit of detail, we can go ahead and go to this stone brick stair here, place down an item frame, and maybe place an iron tool or something like that in it. Just for a little bit of back detail there, um, for some kind of tools and stuff like that that can be strapped on the back there. And uh, with that all complete, uh, that is going to pretty much wrap up uh, layer number three. And with that, we can move on to our next layer, layer number four. All right, guys, so real quick, before we move on to layer four, I want to make one quick addition to uh, the previous layer, layer three. So actually this uh, smooth sandstone block right here in this section up here in the front, we're going to go and actually replace with a cobblestone wall. Um, again, some detailing going on on top here, and that's what that was mainly for. Um, but we do want to replace that with a cobblestone wall, and once we have that complete, we can move on to layer 4. So going ahead and moving into layer 4, we're going to start off by placing down stone buns on these two birchwood planks. We then want to take redstone repeaters, place down a redstone repeater if it's not just flicked all the way out to the uh, ends. Um, just like that on these... Uh, the smooth sandstone blocks right behind the birchwood planks like that for your front hatches. After that's all done, we're going to place down a row of three of smooth sandstone across, followed by a stone button here on both ends. In the middle space here, we're going to take our sandstone slabs, place down one and two. Top slabs going toward the front. We're going to go and switch to wooden trap doors. Place down one and two wooden trap doors after that, again going toward the front there. And that'll be the start there of our cannon, which we'll get to in the next layer. We then want to place down a row of three of smooth sandstone across, followed by a cobblestone wall on both ends. We're going to place down an additional row of three of smooth sandstone across, and again another cobblestone wall on both ends. We then want to place down a row of five of smooth sandstone across. After that row of five, we're going to place down a row of three of smooth sandstone, followed by a cobblestone wall again on both ends. Uh, in the middle space here, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves sandstone stairs. We're going to place down a sandstone upside down stair, followed by a sandstone upside down corner stair on both sides of that stair. And then after that's done, we're going to go and place down a sandstone top slab coming off these three sandstone upside down stairs. Uh, once that's all done for the back section here, we're going to go and take some stone buns. We're going to place it down on these two smooth sandstone blocks on both sides here. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves rails and we're going to place down an iron rail that is going to be on these two smooth sandstone blocks like that for engine vents. Uh, over here to the... Uh, side over here, we're going to place down a sandstone slab. On the other side, we're going to place down a uh, daylight sensor. So it's going to be a little bit different there on both sides. So just make sure you take a look at that. Make sure you have it right. Um, when that's all done there, we do want to go ahead and uh, take our birchwood planks. And we're actually going to replace the three blocks in between the daylight sensor and the sandstone slab. Kind of in the tank here, we're going to replace those with birchwood slabs that go across. On the center birchwood plank, we're going to place down a stone button. And then we're going to place down a redstone repeater. Uh, right next to it, like that, if it's not just flicked all the way to the side, connected up to the daylight sensor. Once that's done, we're going to place down a rail here on both sides like that for more of the engine vents. We're going to take a wither skeleton skull and place it down on top of this smooth sandstone block here, followed by a stone button that's going to go on top of this uh, smooth sandstone block right there. Once that's done, we're going to take wooden pressure plates. We're going to place down a row all the way across here, wooden pressure plates along the back there, on top of those ups and down stairs. Very last thing for us to do, um, or actually uh, the second last thing, we're going to take a wither skeleton skull and place it down on top of these birch wood, or sorry, these acacia wood fence posts like this for the exhaust. And the very last thing this time for real is going to be the antenna, which we're going to very simply place down on this cobblestone wall right here, only on the right side, and um, again, right side only, um, just like that for the radio antenna, obviously. Um, and once that's all done, uh, that's going to do it for layer number four. With that, we'll go ahead and move into our next layer, layer number five. All right, guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five, to begin with, we're going to place down a smooth sandstone block on top of this one right here, followed by a sandstone stair on both sides like this for the front here of the turret. 
Once that's done, coming off this, uh, or basically on first top of this first sandstone top slab here, we're gonna place down a sandstone stair like this with the back facing toward the front, where they're gonna place down a sign here on both sides of the sandstone stair. Once that's done, we're gonna place down a sandstone slab coming off the back of the stair, followed by a wooden sign here, again on both sides. Uh, once that's done, coming off the sandstone slab, we're gonna place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and actually nine sandstone slabs coming off of it like that to go all the way to the front here and basically make your barrel of your gun. Now, on the very tip here of the gun, we're gonna go and place a wooden trap door on the bottom of the sandstone top slab, followed by a wooden sign on both sides here to make the uh, muzzle break like that. And once that's done, we can go ahead and start working on the rest of our turret. Um, so the main goods done, we can go ahead and go back to this section here. We're going to place down a birchwood fence gate that's going to come off the side of the stair, which we may need to break this stone button. Again, depending on what Minecraft version you're on, you may need to break that stone button and actually be able to place um, the birchwood fence gate like this properly. Uh, but if you're able to just place on the stair, good for you. Uh, you're lucky. Uh, but yeah, you just want that birchwood fence gate opened up on both sides there. In the middle, we're going to place down a smooth sandstone block followed by a sandstone corner stair to both sides. Once that's done, we're going to place down a row 3 of smooth sandstone across like this, followed by a uh, cobblestone wall here on both ends. Once that's done there, we're going to place down a row 3 of smooth sandstone across, followed by again a sandstone stair like this on both ends. Uh, we then want to place down another row 3 of smooth sandstone across, followed by a cobblestone wall on both ends. We're then going to place down a, a smooth sandstone block in the middle here, followed by a sandstone stair facing this direction. And same thing over here. Coming off the sandstone stair, we're to place down an air stair, so we, so, so we turn this stair into a corner stair. And then in between the backs of these two stairs, we're going to place down a sandstone stair, so it kind of curves them off like so. And then coming off these uh, kind of curved stairs here, we're going to place down a birchwood fence gate, which again, we may need to break the rail from the previous layer to actually be able to place properly. Um, so just like that, but if you need to do it, just go ahead and replace it. If not, just have your birchwood fence gates open up like that on both ends. Uh, we then just want to take an iron bar, place down one more on top of this one right here. And also on the back here, we're going to go ahead and go to this uh, center uh, stair here. We're actually going to put down a birchwood uh, stair like that in the very center there for the back of the turret. Uh, for a little hatch back there. Anyways, with that all complete, that is going to pretty much wrap up layer number 5. With that, let's go ahead and move on to our last final layers. We have layer 6, uh, 7, and 8. The top of them we're going to put on the rest of the radio antenna and the top of the turret. So with that, let's move on to our last final layers. Alright guys, moving on to our last final layers, we have uh, layers uh, 6 through 8. So for these layers, we're going to start off by going ahead and going to the turret. We're going to go ahead and go to this section right here. We're going to place down two wooden trap doors like this going back. After that, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull over here on the, the uh, sandstone corner stair to the right side of the turret. Once that's done, going ahead and uh, going back from this, we're going to place down a row of three of sandstone slabs across. We then want to place down a birchwood slab to the right side, a sandstone slab here in the middle. And then we're going to go and place down another birch or birchwood plank over here on the left side. On top of the birchwood plank, we're going to go and place down a stone button. And on the side over here, to the left of the plank, we're going to place down a wooden sign like that. Once that's uh, done there, we're going to take our sandstone slabs, place down a row of three across the back here like so. And then a wooden trap door on top of this sand smooth sandstone block right there on the very back. And that's going to do it there for the turret. Last thing for us to do is just to go ahead and go to our radio antenna. We're going to take iron bars, go up one. Uh, two and three iron bars up like that and uh, once we have that all complete that will pretty much do it for my design for the uh, Tiger 2, King Tiger, um, Tiger Ospi, whatever you want to refer to it as. Um, I will be going ahead and doing the camouflage now so if you are interested in having the camouflage or kind of getting a general idea of how I did the camouflage right here for this version of the Tiger you can stick around for it but if you want to do your own camo or just leave it as a tan camo uh, paint scheme which it still looks good as um, you can obviously feel free to do that as well. Anyways, let's go ahead and move into the camo and then wrap up this tutorial. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into putting the camouflage on the Tiger 2. Now, uh, the camouflage itself is really straightforward, really simple, and it basically just involves you taking a mixture of spruce wood, planks, dark oak wood um, stairs and slabs, and uh, some green hardened stink clay to kind of create a nice design. Now, the basic general idea behind this is that we have basically tan, um, is the kind of like the main color overall still, but we have kind of like the brown and uh, the lighter brown, which is represented by the spruce wood, and we have kind of like a dark uh, a green, which is represented by the dark oak wood and green stained clay. Um, so basically, to do this camouflage, it's pretty straightforward. On the barrel, it's really simple. Uh, you're just going to go and basically, you know, place down a dark oak wood slab, spruce wood slab, 
Maybe switch it up. Put down a spruce wood slab, dark oak wood slab, spruce wood slab. Kind of do whatever you guys want. Again, I'm not going to be representing the camo exactly like this one over here. As that's kind of the beauty with this camouflage is you can do different uh, patterns and stuff like that. Or different, uh, you know, placement of blocks. And you kind of get yourself in your own kind of different looking tiger. And you can have multiple of these in a battlefield. And they all kind of look a little bit different from each other. Um, but very straightforward, you know, you're just going to go and basically replace the stair, you know, kind of maybe take it up as the angle um, on the side here and you can have it kind of flow down over here onto this end over here and have a stripe come down. Again, uh, one of the main things to take uh, note of is when you place down a block and you have to break a, you know, smooth the the block out to replace it, make sure you place back a sign or anything like that if it did have it on it, very important. Uh, but we can just go ahead and just kind of, you know, have like a little bit of a stripe here and maybe to complement it, we can have the spruce wood. Um, kind of run alongside it here and we have this upside down stair we can go and replace as well for the fender and you know pretty straightforward there we just replace it put the sign back that goes down and then right here we can have our dark oak with top stab on the bottom there now one of the things with the camouflage that i saw that it didn't affect the road wheels at all so you um, cannot either choose the you know mess with the road wheels and do something different or you don't really have to it just kind of depends on what you want to do there but uh, from pictures I saw with the camouflage, I kind of used to model this off of it didn't really change the road wheels um, at all. Uh, but we can do another uh, kind of line here of spruce wood going along this side here. Um, we can have it kind of wrap up here, go into a bit of the turret, uh, kind of maybe get into the cannon breach or the breach of the gun right here, or the um, kind of like with a connecting piece to the uh, turret, whatever you want to call it. I guess the mantle. Um, or mantlet, whatever the hell it's called. Uh, we're gonna place down a spruce wood plank here, spruce wood slab down, and then just kind of continue the stripes. So the stripes kind of flow across the, the vehicle, as you can see, um, kind of a little bit of an angle there. Um, and we can go and just do one more to kind of show you guys what we're doing here. Um, and then you guys kind of get a general idea of what we're doing. You guys can go crazy and do your own kind of camouflage. Um, but yeah, you can do this. Um, also, make sure that when you do the cobblestone walls, if you're doing a green, you can also go ahead and throw in some mossy cobblestone walls which are uh, never a bad way to go. So it kind of, you know, gives, adds a little bit more green and keeps that camouflage a little bit consistent. You can replace the fence gates as well uh, with maybe the color of wood corresponding to where they are. So you can do some dark wood fence gates there instead. Um, we'll have this kind of flow down here. Maybe replace this one as well. And then this kind of comes down like so and then falls kind of suit onto the back here or onto the side here. So. You know, you guys kind of get the general idea of what we're going for here. Um, you can kind of see what we're doing with striping here. And obviously, you know, you want to make sure that you don't leave huge blotches of uh, tannin. It's not going to look right. So you want to make sure that you try to keep your camouflage, you know, pretty consistent and, you know, kind of flowing well and all that stuff um, all together. But we'll just go and kind of do something like this. And, you know, you guys kind of get a general idea of what we're going for here. And uh, you can look back at this one for some more inspiration. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty straightforward. The camouflage is going to go and take this, kind of wrap the whole tank uh, with the slowly kind of cascading lines that go all the way across it. Um, stripe design in. It definitely adds a nice uh, look to the tiger for sure. Um, and kind of gives it more of a you know realistic sense and you know a camouflage type pattern but again you can just do it in tan because you know it still looks good in tan but anyways feel free to do what you want with it i'll leave it up to you guys now um anyways that's going to wrap up the ti the tutorial for the tiger 2 or the king tiger um really awesome tank really happy to come back and finally redo this build and hope you guys can all enjoy the nice new version of this tank as it was uh, definitely a much needed redesign other than that, thank you guys uh, all for 19,000 subscribers as we are pretty much less than 20 subs away now from uh, 20,000. But uh, thank you guys as always. I really do appreciate it. Um, you know, fantastic the support we've been getting with the channel and uh, how far we've come for sure. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, if you guys uh, do have use this design, I do I say you guys can be proper credit for this uh, tutorial. This can be anything from the sign of the build to my channel or this video. If this does appear on any social media sites, just be sure you get proper credit for the build. That's all I ask for in doing these tutorials. It helps my channel grow and it gets used to keep me inspired to keep on posting these types of videos. So as long as you guys give me credit for it, you're pretty user for the projects you guys are working on. And that, thank you guys all so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 204, and I'll see you guys next time.